Hello, good morning. Welcome to Terrific Tuesday with Pastor Ken Maxey. Just feels like I was on here not too long ago. In fact, I was uh, switched with Pastor Dan last week, so I was here on Fantastic Friday. That's what I called it. I think he calls it Freedom, Freedom Friday, but I called it Fantastic Friday. It is August the 30th. We are almost done with the month of August, and it has been a great month, a uh, lot going on, uh, some milestones for myself. As many of you know, uh, I turned uh, the big 5-0 this earlier or last week, and uh, many of you celebrated with me. Thank you for that. I really appreciate all the happy birthdays and the cards and uh, the well wishes and things like that. So thank you very much. Uh, speaking of cards, thank you, Debbie Huntsman, for your card. I really appreciate that. Uh, good morning to everybody that's jumping on here. Uh, I will try to pay attention and say hello, but I uh, don't always catch everybody. So, but I am very thankful that you're part of this because it's really boring when it's not when it's just me. So, hi Rebecca and Jerry. Good morning to you, Brian Wilson and Wendy. Doug, good to see you out there. I think Barbara was on here uh, uh, earlier. Um, yeah. So anyway, my wife uh, uh, arranged a time for us to go down to Branson. And we enjoyed a time down there. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know you're getting old though when you walk into an antique store and they try to sell you. You know that. You know you're getting old then. Hi, mom and dad. Good to see you. Hi, Julie. Hi, Rita and James. Good to see you guys on in here. I'm trying to scroll back. Yes, Patty is here. Hi, Patty and and uh, and Ruth Baker. Thank you for being being part of this. Hi, Shandy. Glad you're part of uh, part of this uh, uh, this devotional. It's good to see you guys all on here. But anyway, yeah, getting getting old. Uh, I read somewhere that middle age is when age starts to show in the middle. <laughs> you know, your middle age when age starts showing in the middle. You know, you're getting old when your trick knee goes out more than you do. <laughs> Hi, Joyce. Good to see you guys. Uh, you um, you know you're getting old when uh, a hot night out is a heat heat pad on your back. <laughs> uh, what do you call a 50 year old soldier that is defending a building? A half century, a half century. Anyway, that's that's about all the old jokes I have. Anyway. Um, Hey, speaking of old, I want to talk with you about a gentleman in the Bible who was very old, and he was used by God even in his old age. He was a, he was a saint that uh, we know from the Old Testament, and I want to share with you about that in Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 15. So if you have your Bibles or your Bibles apps, you can turn there, uh, Joshua 14, 6 through 15. They say that the, the one good thing about when you get old enough um, uh, jokes, you can laugh at jokes twice because you forget about it the first time. So you get, you get to laugh at jokes twice. Um, hey, here's the deal. I, I, in my devotional, I ask a question. Isn't it a sweet feeling whenever you are vindicated? Whenever you are vindicated, isn't that just a nice feeling? Like when you are at work, uh, you tell your coworkers, you tell your boss, listen, I think this is the way we ought to do it. Uh, I know you guys uh, are thinking about it doing it this way, but I really feel like this is the way we ought to go. And they dismiss you, they do it their own way, and then they come back around saying, okay, now the way we thought, it didn't work, so what was it you were trying to tell us again? You tell them, and then it works the way that you explained it. Or when you have an opportunity to take it away from you, or you miss out on an opportunity to, to accomplish something, and, um, and then you get a second chance at doing it, and then you end up uh, coming through. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? I know in softball, when we were playing, we always have a, a church league softball during summer. And early on in the season, I had not batted very much. Bases loaded, two outs. I grounded out to the shortstop who threw it to second, and the inning was over. And I was so frustrated with myself. But later in the game, same scenario happened. And I came through with a base hit and we scored two runs. It was a great feeling to be able to vindicate yourself. Well, today we want to look at a, like I said, a gentleman who got a second chance at doing something that he had to wait 45 years later to, to do. But he was thwarted by the people of Israel. 
And uh, of course, many probably have already gathered that man was Caleb, and he was one of the twelve tribe or one of the twelve spies that we read about in Numbers thirteen. And if you go back and look at that passage, I know I had you turn it into uh, Joshua fourteen, but let me read. Uh, from Numbers 13, that conversation that was had when the 12 spies came back and they were describing the promised land to the people of Israel. And this is what Caleb said. It says in uh, Joshua, or I'm sorry, Numbers 13, verse 30, he says, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, There were there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, who came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. And later in, Jake, in Joshua 14, it says that the, peop, the hearts of the people melted. In fact, let's just... Uh, Let's just uh, fast forward a little bit to this point where uh, we're going to fast forward uh, 38 years later in Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. So the time comes, they've gotten into the promised land, and then Caleb remembers, hey, you know what? I remember that time where I said, let's go, let's go take the land, and everybody, everybody dismissed me, and we didn't do it, and as a result, we had to wander around, and I remember that. And here's that, and he's like, and now he's back. He's back and says, hey, I'm ready to claim my land. Verse 6, then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of, uh, I want to try to say that, uh, said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who were with me, uh, made, who went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. That's an important phrase, wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive and has said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 80, uh, 85 years old. And as yet, I am as strong to this day as on that day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave him Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephuni, as an inheritance. There you go. 45 years Caleb had to wait. And you got to remember now, Caleb is going back to take this land that he was promised by Moses. And it was not just an easy task. It wasn't gonna be a walk in the park. In fact, Joshua 14, 15, if you, you heard there, uh, the, the people that he was gonna to have to attack were called the Anakim. And they were fathered by a man named Arba who was described as the greatest man among the Anakim. He was a fierce warrior. In fact, all of them were very fierce warrior. But Caleb was chomping at the bit. And uh, we see that he had mountains to climb and giants to conquer, and he was ready to go. And the only thing that was holding him back was the blessing from Joshua. And this speaks of the character that Caleb had, because here he was. He was an, he was an elder among the people of Israel. All the people that were younger than him or uh, that were around his age uh, or older than him, they had all died away except for Joshua, who was the leader. And we know from previous passages he was already growing weary. The Lord said, okay, Joshua, it's no longer uh, your time to go and fight battles. You are just going to distribute the land. But Caleb, who had probably been about the same age as Joshua, because they were both the part of that 12 spy group that went out, he was still strong as the day as he went out. He said, I am still as strong as that day that uh, Moses sent me to spy. 
And that in itself was a miracle that the Lord provided, but that Caleb was still strong because the Lord still had a task for Caleb to do, and he was going to vindicate um, Caleb. Later on, you know, we, we read throughout all those passages that it said that Caleb wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. That's an important key. It's mentioned six times throughout the Old Testament that Caleb was a man who followed the Lord God of Israel wholly followed him it's joshua 14 14 where we just read numbers 14 24 numbers 32 deuteronomy 136 and then again in joshua 14 8 and 9 this was a man who wholly followed the lord throughout his entire life and the lord rewarded him with the inheritance of this land now here's the thing later on we know that caleb goes and defeats the land of his or uh, this land of that belonged to the Anakin and he could have stood there on that mountain and he could have shouted I told you so I told you that I uh, that we could have taken the land 40 years ago but instead what Caleb did was he went and showed them so he showed them that hey I'm 85 years old but I wholly follow the Lord God of Israel and he is the one who accomplished this task he gave me this land and I don't care how old you are. You may be 50 like me. You might be 85 like Caleb. You may be only eight and a half years old. I don't care. If you are wholly following the Lord, he is going to give tasks for you to do. And it is up to you to wholly follow, to wholly trust the Lord that he is going to lead the way. If you know for certain that the Lord has given you a task to accomplish, then go knowing and trusting that the Lord, just as Caleb did, now, sometimes uh, people get in your way, they, um, they thwart the plans of the Lord. Now, remember, there's the permissive will and there's the sovereign will of the Lord. The permissive will allows the world to sometimes interfere with the things that he is trying to do. And that might be God has given you a job or a task, something that you know you need to do. But the people of the world keep interfering and keep, uh, keep you away from doing what the Lord's wanting you to do. But ultimately... The sovereign will of the Lord will come through. And there will be a moment where the Lord says, Hey, you remember that project I gave you? You remember that person I wanted you to talk with that you've been praying for for a number of years? Now is the moment to go and speak to him. Everybody may be telling you that is a lost cause. There is no way. The Lord will never get a hold of their heart. They are too hard. They are too, uh, their back is turned against the Lord. But you've prayed for that person. The Lord has laid upon your heart and said, now is the time to go speak to him. If the Lord is doing that, don't hesitate. Go and do it. It's just like Caleb. I am ready to take that mountain. I don't care if the Anakims are still there. The Lord promised me that land and he's going to give it. And I wholly follow the Lord God of Israel. And that's what we today need to be doing. Holy following the Lord God of Israel and of the earth and of the universe. And it doesn't matter what our government does. It doesn't matter what our politicians do. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter what our social warriors out there are trying to keep us from doing. The Lord is laying upon our hearts to go and make disciples and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is what we're called to do. Let us continue to reach out. Let us continue to show others this is what the Lord's going to do. We don't have to stand there and say, I told you so. Let's go and show them so that the Lord is still working and he's still moving mountains, right? Amen? Amen. All right, well, let's pray. There's a lot going on today. I hope you appreciate the example that Caleb gives us. Even these thousands of years ago, Caleb is still showing us that we can go uh, to conquer giants and climb mountains. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this day. We thank you for another beautiful Tuesday. It really is an amazing day that you've given to us. The sunshine, the rain yesterday, the sunshine today. Lord, I pray for my, my friends and even my family that are out there that, uh, Lord, you have laid upon their heart a, a project or a task or somebody that they need to reach out to. And the world just keeps interfering. Satan keeps just jumping in the middle of it and distracting. But Lord, I pray that we would continue to fight through, that we would continue to wait upon you, just as Caleb waited those 45 years, patiently waiting for the time where you said, now is the time to go. And, and then when you said, go, he went. And I pray that we would do the same thing, that Lord, as we wait patiently for your guidance, that when you call us to serve, that we would be ready to do that. 
Lord, I thank you that no matter what age we're at, you always have a task for us, that we don't need to just sit idly by, but Lord, we can be working for your kingdom and we can be reaching out to other people, sharing the good news of your salvation. I pray for my friends out there that are dealing with illnesses, that are dealing with financial issues, for family issues. I pray that you be over all of it. Uh, Lord, it may be like a mountain to them to overcome, but Lord, if you are on their side, uh, great things can happen. I pray that you would just continue to strengthen their faith as they uh, meet the challenges uh, on a daily basis. Lord, thank you so much for your blessings. We are so blessed as a country. We really are. Uh, help us not to just sit back um, and take all these things for granted, but may we use it to bless others. And we pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for Terrific Tuesday. I hope to see you back next week. I will be back. I hope you enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Enjoy time with your family and, and uh, friends. And uh, we'll see you back next Tuesday. God bless.